Cancer, welcome to Monarch Intuition, and tonight I'm going to be doing your January 2023 mid-monthly check-in reading for you. So first and foremost, I wanted to start out and say it's okay. Everything is fine. You're not going crazy. You are experiencing a very traumatic shift within the astrological bodies, all right? However, if you believe in astrology or if you don't, there is a major change going on. So what you're currently feeling right now, Cancer, is you're feeling the lingering effect of Mercury retrograde, all right? So we had Mercury retrograde in December. It's still going on, I believe, until January the 18th, right? But we also had that full moon in your sign. We had the full moon in Cancer, which is a terrible, terrible place to have the full moon, all right? It's not like having a full moon in Leo where, you know, everyone kind of gets into their ego, or full moon in Sagittarius where people are just like, yeah, I want to go to Miami. This full moon brings out the raw emotions, but generally it's not so bad. You know, people start crying, people are, you know, upset, whatever. But the Mercury retrograde on top of that full moon in Cancer was like bad for a lot of people. All right. I was like sifting through, um, tarot forums, astrology forums, whatever. And people are always posting, oh my gosh, I feel terrible because of, you know, what's going on. I don't know why I feel so bad. And it's like, well, Mercury retrograde, full moon on Cancer. And, um, you know, because it's still kind of lingering, because this energy is still in effect until what, the 18th, you're going to feel it until about then, maybe even until the 20th, until things kind of lighten up. So I wouldn't go ahead and say, you know, make a New Year's resolution. If you did, just kind of like say, all right, it's probably not going to work out. Make a New Year's resolution, a new one after Mercury retrograde. If you have decided, um, you know, New Year, New Me, wait until after Mercury retrograde ends. Don't try to rush and make new ideas. Don't try to start new relationships right now, especially after what's just happened. And I kind of feel like maybe you're not even trying to think about that. Maybe you're still sitting in your feels right now, like sitting in your feelings, thinking about that was terrible. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's not as bad because the full moon is over. Maybe it's not so bad for you, but you still feel something. So what do we need to know for cancer? What's going on for you? Give you a couple more shuffles. If you're new to my channel, I like to pull one major arcana to see the energy and then clarify with a different deck. So what's going on for you, cancer? We have the star. Understanding how things connect. Okay. I feel like cancer, what could really help you right here is understanding the own negative aspects of your sign. Because here's the thing, everyone loves to talk about the positive aspects of their sign. All right. But no one likes to hear the negative aspects of them. For example, you know, cancer isn't always, you know, the divine mother. The moon represents treachery. It represents betrayal, pain, suffering, human misery, agony, it has a lot of negative connotations. Your sign has some of the worst ones to it because all the water signs have like that really hidden, awful, I don't know what you would call it, treachery behind them because the, the oceans are treacherous. They don't really care who you are. If, like they're going to have a tsunami, they're going to have a tsunami. If there's going to be an undertow, they're going to be an undertow, right? If they're going to sink your ship, the ocean's going to sink your ship. There's like nothing you can do about it. And that's how all water signs are. So what I'm seeing for you right now is that I think you need to focus on some sort of astrology right here. When you start to feel that way, look at the planetary bodies, look at the planetary shift. All right. Look at what's going on. Don't just sit there and think, why am I feeling this way? No, actually go and look at maybe your birth chart. All right. When I see the star, it does represent the birth chart because remember, the magician is Aquarius energy. The star is also Aquarius energy. The magi or the magicians were the people who follow the star in the Bible, right? So, and remember, magician is, or magi is just a shortened form of magician. So when I see the starlight energy is that maybe you do need to look at the grand picture of something, not just look at it from one aspect. Because I know a lot of people are, who even watch terror are like, I don't really believe in astrology. I don't really believe in that. Okay, sure. You want to go for more scientific basis? Well, no one could really understand what happened scientifically with when everyone was feeling that major shift during that full moon in Cancer, other than the fact that it was just what it is, right? So I think that maybe focusing on a little bit of the esoteric 
might help you a lot more because remember you are one of the most empathic and psychic signs that there is. Some people don't believe in that. Some people think it's cringy to say empathic or empath, whatever. I'm not empathic, but some people are. And um, what I'm seeing for you with this star energy is also understand that there is light in the darkness. There is a rhyme and a reason to a situation because remember your sign is the moon or your astrological body is the moon, but it doesn't have light. The moon is basically like a crater in the sky rotating around the earth. The sunlight is what gives the moon light, right? The sun shining through the moon. If you want to see the true light in the darkness is to see the stars, to focus on things that are not the moon. And I think that's what you maybe need to do right here, Cancer, is understand that if you're looking at the moonlight, that is a false illumination of light because it's not true light. It's dimmed light. You need to look at the stars because they will like unlock some sort of hidden information for you, okay? Now, I'm not talking bad about your astrological body right here. I'm just saying, hey, if you want to move forward, if you want to get past that energy, what happened, then what you need to do is you need to follow a different type of logic right there. A lot of people like the full moon. I've never quite understood that because you're not supposed to manifest on the full moon. You're supposed to cleanse and purge. It represents a mother giving birth. It's agony, okay? So I've never quite understood that. Like even when we look at say werewolves, that's a curse of the full moon because you know, they're going through pain through their, uh, through their transformation, like their body's ripping apart, right? So even then it's still not like a good thing. In fact, in some vampiric mythologies, vampires have a weakness to the full moon because that's like the brightest time for the sun. So even then it's not like, um, a good time period, right? But I think you need to understand that there is light in the darkness for you. But I think you just need to focus on maybe the constellation of your life, your birth chart, for example. Your birth chart can give you really good information on what you are supposed to be doing. For example, some people want fame, but their birth chart says they're not going to be famous. And no matter what you do, it's just going to be futile. However, you can still have riches and wealth and be like, famous, quote unquote, by being a scientist. Maybe you have heavy Aquarius placements, right? Or you could be um, the owner of a resort. Maybe you have tourist placements. You could have like a world famous resort. That's kind of like what I'm seeing right here for you is like there are ways around a situation if you focus on your own birth chart and see what you are truly supposed to be doing. So anyway, what do we need to know? I'm like eight minutes in and I haven't done shit. So Let's look at your Revelations Tarot. This deck does have reversals in it. We have the King of Wands in reversed. We have the Three of Wands upright. And we have the Six of Swords upright. Yeah, so... What I'm seeing for you is that you're sitting on your throne, you're sitting at your house maybe. When I say sitting on your throne, it's probably like you're sitting on your couch, you're sitting on your bed, whatever. Place that's comfortable for you. You're sitting on your throne and you're like, I don't wanna move forward. I don't even know what to do. But here's the thing, you're being offered a new opportunity to move forward in a very slow manner, a very calm manner, all right? But it will require you to actually move slowly. So getting up and doing slow things throughout the day, maybe you are suffering from depression or from that, what happened. You know, little steps, okay? Go drink some water. Go drink some coffee. Maybe start your day with drinking water first. You know, you should start your day with drinking water first before you drink your coffee. It actually works better that way. Um, so what I'm seeing is that it's small steps forward. I kind of feel like the King of Wands, usually he's someone who's out there, outgoing, happy, but his arms are crossed. He's sitting on his throne. He's bored. He's almost kind of like defeated because he has no inspiration. So with this Three of Wands right here, what I'm seeing for you is that, you know, you're sending out your ships and you're waiting for your ships to be returned to you. 
And that could be that six of swords energy is that your swords are, or your ship is moving out slowly, but you're waiting for your ship to come back. Maybe it's taking a really long time. So let's look at this. I'm going to use the King of Wands, or not the King of Wands. I'm going to use the Vampire Tarot. This deck does have reversals in it. We have the Magician. We have the King of Wands again. Wow, okay. You're going to have some inspiration soon. You're going to have some divine spark, divine alignment right here. I kind of feel like this is just, you know, after effects of Mercury retrograde. I feel like you are actually going to have some sort of heavy inspiration because remember the Lord of Scepters is kind of like the magician card for the minor arcanas. All right. And then you have the major arcana, the magician coming out, paying attention to the star. Remember what I said? The magician is like the astrologer right here. If you go and you look at your birth chart, you're really going to find a secret. Okay. Go to like Cafe Astrology, type in your birth chart, type in your whatever, your information, and just actually sit there and read it. Don't skim it. Like that's the that's the worst part. I've noticed a lot of people do that. They're like, they don't care about, you know, their Venus placement. Your Venus placement is your most important placement when it comes to love. All right. You're like if you're watching tarot from your sun sign perspective, it ain't gonna do shit for you. Um if you're looking at your work placement and you're looking at it from your sun sign perspective, it's not going to do shit for you. You have to watch from your Venus or your Mars perspective. If you want to know the actual future, like what's actually going to happen for you, go and watch your, um, your North node or, um, what is the other one? If you're looking for like what you're supposed to be doing, your 10th house is really important. How people view you and how things are going to interact with you. That's your rising sign. Your true self is your moon sign. Your, your sun sign is really not that important, okay? It's, it's your egotistical self. So maybe this is what you need to hear right now is that this is the reason you're feeling this way, like because your ego has been bruised and battered by that full moon. So whenever you're feeling down, you should watch from your ego perspective. It's actually a really good idea to watch when you're not feeling so hot from your ego-based perspective to see what's going on with your ego so you can fix it, okay? What's going on with this Three of Wands? We have the Temperance card coming out with the Ace of Scepters. Yeah, this will give you some sort of information because now the angels can start working on protecting you and moving you forward into a new path within your life. So you have been three, well, no. One, two, three, four, five fire energies coming out. You have two air energies coming out. So yeah, I do feel like this is definitely um, a fast rush in the right direction. The temperance is alchemizing a brand new situation with, these eight, with this ace of scepters, a brand new opportunity for you. Your ships are being sent out. They will be returned. Um, you will have that divine spark coming back for you. The Six of Swords, you have the Eight of Grails with the Two of Scepters. You're going to be walking away from something because now you have this new opportunity with the Two of Scepters. It's like, I see where I want to go. I've been offered the opportunity with the Ace of Wands. Now let me go and do that. But I feel like you're going to do it in kind of like, you know, a very slow manner. And that's fine. You shouldn't rush things. It's kind of like, you get the opportunity to go to the beach. Maybe you want to go to Hawaii. Well, take your time there. A lot of people do this when they go on vacation or whatever. They want to, you know, rush it around and do anything. No, take some time for you. That's the whole point of a vacation to like just vacate where you are and go somewhere else and, you know, relax. And I kind of feel like that's what's being offered to you is you're going to be moving forward. You're going to have that, you know, spark say, this is what I'm going to do. I want to do this with my life that seems important to me. It seems what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm going to take it slowly. I'm going to take it one step at a time and that's fine. You have the five of cups coming out. You have the three of scepters and you have the five of wands coming out. You're not finding happiness where you are. So the three of scepters is you send your ships out, hoping for them to be returned. But you have the Five of Scepters, so you have the Six of Swords and the Three of Scepters. So the Six of Swords is sailing across very calm waters. Maybe it's coming back towards you. The Three of Scepters, as you sent your ships out, maybe they're coming back. Maybe you thought with the Five of Cups that they weren't coming back, but here they are. Just when you feel like last minute they're not going to happen, here it is. But this Five of Scepters, this lower base egotistical energy of Leo, is here. Um, 
Cloud Deceptor doesn't always have to be bad. It's just kind of like witty banter. Like, this is, um, pages fighting in an arena, but they're not really trying to kill one another. It does represent warfare, but it's for a competition. So, maybe you're just meeting someone who has a lot of passion right here. Someone who keeps you on your toes. You're going to take it slow with this person, but I feel like at the same time, this it's situation, person, place, or thing is going to keep you on your toes. It's going to keep it exciting while you're walking away. You have the Queen of Cups, your energy coming out, the Six of Knives, and the Nine of Skulls. <clears throat> I do see you're traveling towards something, traveling towards this Nine of Skulls. Could be a mental vacation. Taking a day off of work to get your head space clear, staying at home in your own, you know, your own bubble, your own sphere right here. But I do see that there is movement with the two of scepters and the ace of scepters. The three of scepters is the three of wands. So you are sending out your ships. The ships are coming back, are they? Two of pentacles, yeah, balanced out. They're coming back with the prince of cups facing the right way with the prince of scepters. So here's the thing. You send out your ships, ships come back, you know, in a emotional, exciting way. So something is going to make you move forward because you send out your ships, someone receives the message and then sends a message back to you and it's really exciting. Maybe you're wanting to hear from this person or wanting to hear from this job. This could be a very good opportunity for you to get a new job right here. Maybe that's what you're looking for. If you're not looking for a new job, maybe you're looking for a relationship, sending out that message might help. I feel like you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Just do it with, for the right reasons. Um, yeah, strength with the star with the Seven of Knives. Strength and the Star come back in a very clever manner with the Queen of Scepters. You know, being tethered to the earth is important right here. The seven of knives represents <clears throat> getting away with something with the queen of scepters. I'm kind of worried about that. What's going on? The ace of knives and the devil. Hmm. I feel like you're going to have victory over an addiction right here. You're going to have victory over an addiction. And that's what's going to help you move forward as this Queen of Scepters again. So with the Strength card, you feel tethered to a situation. You're looking at the stars, right? You're being held back from danger. Sending out a message is important because you're getting information back from this message and the information is about the devil, about how dangerous the devil can be. By you receiving this information back, it allows you to untether yourself from some sort of depression to move forward as the Queen of Wands. So in a way, I kind of feel like you want to send out a message to something and so you do, but the message comes back. It's kind of, you know, fiery, passionate, whatever. You look at it, you see the devil, and you're like, mm, that's not what I want. I'm glad I got the answer. I got the clarification, and now I can move forward. So that's the situation right there, is that you're wanting a answer, and you're looking for truth, but you're doing it in a clever manner to see the devil behind something. Why is the devil hiding behind this? The Queen of Cups with the Nine of Knives. The Daughter of Grails is paranoid about something. Someone is paranoid about someone else right here. You or someone else paranoid about you. Anyway, this is a little bit too much.
four scepters, ten of skulls, and the nine of grails. Here's the thing. You're going to understand someone is kind of shady, someone is evil, someone's a demon, all right? Maybe you're feeling depressed about that. Maybe you don't have clarity. You're going to get answers. You're going to get information regarding that. Maybe you feel like, you know, during that full moon in Cancer, it brought up repressed emotions about someone. You really thought about that person long and hard. You send a message out to them. They send a message back to you. You get the clarity that you need, that someone is truly bad for you. It allows you to move forward from that. By you moving forward, you move on to a complete... Com you move on to completion with the Ten of Pentacles, with the Four of Scepters. You complete this cycle right here, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing within your life. You have new opportunities, you have new ambitions, and you have a wish coming true with the Nine of Cups, okay? Don't give too much attention to whatever this is right here. This is a little bit dark, all right? Here's the thing. You're going through a dark period. Get it. Um, I get it. Don't let anything come back up during Mercury retrograde. Don't send out messages. Well, here's the thing. If you're going to do this, don't do it during Mercury retrograde, okay? That's what that's what the devil is. Don't do it during Mercury retrograde. I kind of feel like, in a way, some of you have. Here's the thing. Mercury retrograde is bad because it always... It's a cycle. That's what you have to understand. Mercury retrograde is wanting to teach you a lesson, all right? A very harsh lesson. It's basically saying, all right, here's time to yourself. You're going to feel a bunch of different things. Are you going to go back to things that hurt you or are we going to allow you to move on to a new cycle within your life? Are you going to move on to that new cycle or are you not? Because if you go back and text your ex and all these other things and get into a relationship, blah, 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 right? The bad shit's going to happen to you again. It is what it is. However, if you don't do this and you just stay the course, you're going to have a celebration with the Ten of Pentacles, with the Nine of Cups. You get a completion and it's, you know, some sort of like, abundance within your life and it comes with the wish the three of cups the six of grails and the lovers yeah so you're moving on to something that is divinely connected for you so this right here you know it is what it is cancer honestly i can't make you not go back to your ex or make you go back to old situations but i feel like right now you're just it's a good thing you are where you are if you're sitting on your throne and you're not moving forward and you're not feeling any sort of progression, you're sitting there in your feels wondering why it's a good thing, okay? Because after Mercury retrograde, you've completed the cycle. I would say around the 20th, 22nd, whatever, maybe even in February, let this month just kind of go by, all right? At the end of Mercury retrograde, around the 20th, you can set your new intentions. You can, you know, make a New Year's resolution. Just understand that the year technically hasn't ended until Mercury retrograde ends. And even after a couple of days, there's still that lingering energy of just, ugh, because everyone's kind of recovering from that. <clears throat> but just know that you need to pass this examination. All these things that are coming up are from the devil, okay? You feel tethered, you feel chained to a situation. It is what it is. That's the devil energy. It's saying, can you move forward? Are, you're being tested right here, Cancer. That's okay, because once you move forward, once you pass the cycle, there's this great release. There's this great relief for you. You just have repressed emotions. You have this really dark energy because you feel tied to something right here. You feel like something is not over, but that's the thing is it is over. It's just that it's been a traumatic experience for you that you feel chained to, okay? Maybe it was your first really bad breakup. Maybe it was the first time someone cheated on you. Maybe it was the first time you got fired from a job. Whatever the situation was, it's, de it's left a deep mark on you. Okay, and every Mercury retrograde is going to come back up, but during your full moon and during full moon in Mercury retrograde, it's really going to just pull that poison right out of you. <clears throat> but, but, there's hope in the darkness. Remember, that's what your whole reading is about. So don't focus on this. That's, that's what you need to understand. This negative energy right here is what you're not supposed to be focusing on. You're supposed to be moving forward with the Queen of Wands. You have a brand new opportunity coming out. When when I say a brand new opportunity, you have a brand new like way to feel better. You're going to feel like you know the weight has been lifted from your shoulders. You're going to celebrate. It's kind of going to be like night and day. One day you're going to wake up and be like, "Wow, that was weird," and that's what it's going to be for you. A lot of people, you know, after that full moon in Cancer, they just woke up and was like, "Wow, what 
the fuck was that? So, um, yeah, I just feel like it's hitting you pretty hard. But, you know, you have the lovers coming out, which is a positive, you know, indication of new love coming into your life. It doesn't always have to be. <clears throat> so let's look at your spellcasting oracles. But you have the Ten of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups. You are celebrating with the Three of Cups and giving to the lovers right here. So I feel like it is a happy conclusion, but just don't focus on that. If your ex comes back, if you feel like you need to go back to your ex, if you feel all that other stuff, eh. So you have animals and you have confidence. So what I'm seeing with this animals energy, what you need to do is you need to focus on your animals. Here's the thing. Find your spiritual animal that you connect to, okay? For example, if you were an animal, what would you be? I gave this analogy, and I believe Taurus is reading, maybe it was Aries. Um, it was like, do you connect to a beaver? I know some, that's a weird animal. However, a beaver makes a very impossible dam to break, right? You need TNT usually to blow up a beaver dam. And that could be indication, like, if that is, you know, your spiritual guide, the animal that is connected to you, like, if you were an animal, you'd be a beaver. You would probably be a very good architect, okay? If you, you know, are, say, someone who connects deeply to cats, then you would probably be very good in a career where you don't have to deal with a lot of different people. Like, maybe IT work would be very good for you. You don't deal with a lot of people. You get to sit in dark rooms all day. It is what it is. Um, finding the animal is very important. And it doesn't even have to be something that, you know, physically matches you. Maybe it would be. You know, some people have fox faces. Some people have fish face. Some people have, I don't know, like, take a look around. Some people look like animals. So what I'm seeing right there is once you find that animal that really connects with you, move forward with confidence. I feel like that's very heavily indi indicative. I think that's the word, whatever. Correlates to your birth chart. There we go. That animal energy will connect to, you know, what you were supposed to be doing within your life right here. If you look at your birth chart, look at your 10th house, you look at your north node, you look at a few other things, you will say, hey, that animal really does represent who I am as an individual. Like, if you weren't a human, you would probably have been born that animal. So that's very important for you. In fact, um, I have the deck somewhere. I haven't used it in a while. It's called the, like, what is it? The Animal Spirit Deck. If you want to have, like, a really good Animal Spirit Deck, get that one right there. It's called the Animal Spirit Deck. The, wait. No, it's not. That's the Wild Unknown. That would be a very good deck for you to get, though, if you want to do, um, you know, an animal-based deck. It's the Wild Unknown. I have the Animal Spirits deck. It's just a bunch of animal spirits. It's like whale, camel, tarantula, whatever. I used to use it on this channel. I might pull it back out and start doing that again. But anyway, maybe you need one of those decks. But, you know, finding that animal will help you move forward with confidence. You'll be like, oh, yeah, okay. So you have Retreat, Crab, Sovereignty, Crow, and Wren, Awareness. So pull back from this, okay? Remember who you are, Simba, um, with this crow sovereignty. Ren, awareness. Pay attention to what's going on astrologically, okay? Retreat from the old situations. Pull back with your energy, with this Queen of Cups energy. Understand that, hey, you know, you're sitting on your throne. You have the Queen of Cups energy. You have, um... What's the word I'm looking for? I just drew a blank. Anyway, be aware of what's going on around you. Focus on um, other things. Know that this is not going to last forever. Know that what you're feeling is not you going crazy. A lot of people are feeling this way. <clears throat> Man, I should have brought my tea. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's over there. Of course, of course. So let's look at the, um, what are these? Halloween oracles. You have eternal love, love is love is love, and transcends physical death, cauldron, synergy, and healing. 
Maybe you need to find your true love, Cancer. Maybe your true love was from the past, and maybe you're scared to go back to that person. I'm not going to say it is or isn't. I'm not thinking that if you've... When I say go back to your past, like, it could be a friend that you didn't talk to, okay? I'm not going to say you were dating that person. If you broke up with that person, an ex is an ex for a reason, okay? I'm talking about whatever this is. Eternal love. Love is love is love and transcends physical death. Whatever. Um, culture and synergy and healing. You might be healing past relationships. You might be healing future relationships. You just might be healing yourself, okay? What's meant for you will be meant for you. The universe has a funny way of pulling people together and pulling people apart, okay? It moves people who are supposed to be together into alignment, no matter where they are, who they're with, whatever. At the right time, the universe says, hey, these two people, eh, they're together, then that it, that's it. Um, so I wouldn't pay attention to too much from your past. Maybe it is someone from your past coming back into your life, but I won't think it's like an ex. I think it'll be like, you know, someone who was like maybe you went to school with maybe they sent like three chairs back from you you never paid attention to them they didn't pay attention to you you crossed paths and that's funny that could be that high priestess energy is like you cross paths you saw each other a lot but you just never really gave anyone a second thought like that would be that situation not whatever this is so um if you thought you had problems with someone then i wouldn't go back to that person Let's look at your room cards. You have protection, algas, protection, assistance, advancements, and persistence. Spiritual meaning is guardian spirit, divine intervention, and mysticism. You're protected. You're good. You will receive the assistance that you need. If you look at your spirit animal cards, I would say definitely... Just start scrolling through animals. Like, ask someone, if I was an animal, what animal would I be? And they'll be like, I don't know. They'll probably make something stupid up. Like, you ask someone and they'll be like, oh, you look like a frog. But, like, actually ask someone. Say, like, no, for real. Like, if I was an animal, what would I be? And they'd be like, well, I don't know. Maybe you'd be like a bear or a tiger or whatever. Like, but be real about it. Rado. Speed your journey, ease a transition, aid communication, bring good news, and find your spiritual way. Now let's look at your Awaken. What are these? No. I don't know what the name is of this deck. Maybe it is Awaken. You have Friend Flurry and Ground Down. So yeah, Ground Down. I feel like you have a lot of thoughts and a lot of people passing in and out of your mind right here. A lot of situations, you know, just kind of like going back and forth. But ground down, focus, get through this Mercury retrograde, you'll be all right. Um, it's not going to last forever. So anyway, Cancer, I hope you enjoyed this reading and I'll talk to you later.